Hey, what is up mortals? It is Grog Funky here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 4 of What If Deku Was a Dragon Slayer. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So, we begin. Class 1A spent the day going through academics. It was a shock for the students to find out that a hero course had such rigorous book studies. But soon the afternoon arrived, and it was time for them to undertake the hero part of their academia. The students were sitting in the classroom waiting for the hero studies class to begin. Suddenly, the door slid open and All Might entered the room with a goofy pose. The blonde hero then shouted at the top of his lungs, I am here, coming into the room like a hero. Every 1A student was shocked and elated at the number one hero's presence. Midoriya was the first to state what everyone else was thinking. All Might really is a teacher at UA this year. How awesome is that? We get to learn from the number one hero. This is going to be an interesting year. Good afternoon, students. You have all come here with the goal of becoming pro heroes. You should all know that walking the path of a hero can be dangerous. You will face the worst that humanity has to offer. But your teachers will do our best to prepare you for the end. But keep in mind that there are some things that cannot be taught, only learned. A grim mood settled over the class. All realized that he probably went a little too heavy-handed. So? I am going to be pushing you hard out of the gate. The blucky hero held up a card that had the words combat written in red. Today, we will be undertaking battle training. All of the students got super excited. This was what most of them thought about when they thought of hero work, beating down bad guys and saving people. All Might pushed a button on the remote, and shelves holding numbered briefcases emerged from the wall. If you kids are going to be learning to be heroes, then you should dress the part. These cases contain your hero costumes. The paperwork you turned in had a place to design these snappy outfits. Get changed and meet me on field beta. The kids entered the training field all decked out in their costumes. Midoriya's costume consisted of a sleeveless green shirt, green shorts, and red sandals. The fiery teen also had a white scarf wrapped around his neck. Wendy noticed how Midoriya's costumes showed off his lean but well-muscled body. The blue-haired teen felt her heart race a little at the sight of the green-haired boy's toned physique. The Sky Dragon Slayer was jarred out of her hormone-driven fantasies when Midoriya spoke to her. Wendy, your costume looks great. It really suits you. Oh, thank you, Midoriya. It really did come out well. Wendy's costume consisted of a green leotard that had a scale pattern. The neck of the leotard had an arrow pattern that was highlighted in light green and yellow. The outfit had no sleeves, but Wendy wore two gold armbands on her upper arms. The air user also wore knee-high boots, and on her back was a pair of white wings that had a feathery appearance to them. Uraraka saw the two friends talking and approached them. Hey guys, you look so good! I should have been more clear on my design. This tight fit is not really my style. As Midoriya could not disagree with the pink-cheeked girl, the costume left little to the imagination. In fact, Mineta could be seen giving the suit a thumbs up. This design is really cool, Uraraka. The space theme is a great match for your gravity quirk. And the colors really show off your cuteness. Uraraka did her best not to blush at the compliment from the well-muscled boy. Wendy, on the other hand, did not like that Izuku had complimented Uraraka's costume more than hers. The girl's jealous streak started to eat at her. Then Wendy wondered why she was feeling jealous. I mean, it was not like she liked Midoriya or anything. I mean, he was only her friend, right? Before the breezy girl could get too deep into thought, All Might spoke. You all look magnificent, so... Let's get this exercise started. The number one hero took out a slip of paper from his pocket. A team of villains have hidden a bomb in one of the surrounding buildings. It is the hero's mission to capture the villain and the bomb before time runs out. If the heroes are captured by the villains or if time runs out, then they will have failed the exercise. That must be the backstory. It seemed like the plot of some old action movie. Sir, wouldn't it be more realistic if we fought in the open? No, it wouldn't, Miss Yao Yorozu. I can understand why you would think that, though. The media often shows conflicts between heroes and villains taking place in open spaces in the middle of the day, but this is not the normal. Most interactions between heroes and villains take place indoors, shady back rooms, and abandoned warehouses. This exercise will give you all a better idea of what a real hero work is like. The Class 1A students all nodded in understanding. While All Might may have acted goofy, his lessons were well thought out. For this exercise, you will be split into teams of two. One team will play the villains, and the other will play the heroes. I will now name off the teams. Midoriya had hoped he would be teamed up with Wendy or Uraraka. 
but he was paired with Denki Kaminari. Wendy was paired with Kyoka Jiro. Uraraka got paired with Toru Hagakure. All Might then took two boxes and drew out two balls to decide which teams would play the heroes and which would be the villains. The number one hero drew the first two teams. Midoriya and Kaminari would be the heroes, while Bakugo and Ida would be the villains. Both teams prepared for the trial ahead. Midoriya and Kaminari stood outside of the building where Bakugo and Ida had hidden their bomb. Midoriya had a sour face as the two boys laid out their plan. Is something wrong, man? No, why do you ask? Then you should tell your face that. Midoriya was taken aback by Kaminari's straightforward comment. It is just that I was hoping to be paired with Wendy for this exercise. She's that petite little girl with blue hair, right? I can see why you'd want to be paired with her. She's super cute. That has very little to do with it. So, the fact she's cute has little to do with it. Okay, maybe a little. I knew it! Kaminari then gave Midoriya a thumbs up. Look, I would have liked to pair with a girl too. Maybe that Jiro girl or Yaoyorozu. But we are teammates now. Isn't one of the goals of this training to see how you work with people you don't know? You have a point, Kaminari. You know, you're a lot smarter than you look. The blonde boy responded in a joking manner. Ouch, man! That was really hurtful. So, how are we going to take care of these two? Kachan won't wait for us to attack. As soon as we enter the building, he will likely attack us. I do not know how we are going to deal with Aida's speed. Just leave Aida to me. Really, Kaminari? Yeah, I got the feeling that you have businesses to settle with Bakugo. I also got the feeling that you can't handle him. Okay, let's do this. That's what I like to hear. Both boys entered the building through an open window. The two of them moved through the hallways quickly, surprised that they had not met any resistance, mainly in the form of a foul-mouthed ashen blonde. But that did not last long. As Midoriya and Kaminari got close to the middle of the building, they saw that Bakugo was waiting for them. Kaminari then spoke quietly. Looks like you were right. Yeah, that must mean Ida is defending the weapon alone. I'll find another way up there to get the weapon. Okay, good luck. Kaminari then made his way back down the hallway. Midoriya did not know if Kaminari could beat Ida. The electric teen had outperformed him on the quirk assessment test, but still, Ida was just so fast. Midoriya shook himself out of this thought. The fiery teen knew he had to deal with Kachan first. And then, that was going to be the Herculean task. Midoriya decided on the direct approach. The green teen walked out from his hiding place and stared Bakugo down. I'm surprised that you decided to face me like this. I thought you'd be too chicken. Of course. I plan to fight you, Kachan. After all, I have nothing to fear from you. Bakugo's eyes glowed red with rage. Let's see if you think that after I beat the crap out of you! The explosive teen launched himself at Midoriya. Bakugo then brought his right hand up to hit the pine-haired teen with an explosive palm strike. But it was for naught. Midoriya intercepted Bakugo's strike and caught it with his hands. The green teen decided to exploit Bakugo's mistake and slammed him into a nearby wall. The Dragon Slayer used so much force that Bakugo actually flew through the wall and landed in the next room. The wind was knocked out of the spiky teen's lung when he landed on the floor. Still think you can beat me down so easily, Kachan? I have control of my new power now. If you plan to be the number one hero, then you're going to have to get through me. Don't get cocky just because you got one lucky hit in, Deku! Call me Deku all you want, Kachan. From now, Deku is the name of a hero! Bakugo used his explosion to fly through the air once again. The two boys battled back and forth for several minutes. Neither of them were able to get the upper hand. Midoriya knew that he could not afford to hold back. The flame youth knew that if he held back, then Bakugo could run out the clock. Midoriya knew he had to whip out some of the powerful attacks that Natsu taught him. Midoriya channeled his magic power into his fists. As the Dragon Slayer attacked, the spiky blonde he yelled at the top of his lungs, Fire Dragon Iron Fist! Midoriya struck Bakugo with five or six slamming punches. As the explosive teen stumbled back, Midoriya finished by redirecting his fire into his right foot. As the determined youth brought down a kick wrapped in fire on Bakugo, Midoriya shouted, Fire Dragon Talon! If Bakugo had been anyone else, he would have passed out, but these strikes only seemed to make Bakugo even angrier. Bakugo did not like that Midoriya was causing him so much trouble. Bakugo knew he was not weak but he could not bring himself to admit that Midoriya was this strong. Bakugo lifted his arms up and pointed the barrel of his grenade-shaped gauntlet. Let's see how tough you are, Deku! 
Bakugo placed his finger in a giant pole pin. These gauntlets aren't just for looks. It lets me store my sweat up and create bigger explosions. After hearing this, All Might spoke to Bakugo over the earpiece he gave them before the match. Young Bakugo, that is dangerous. Don't do it. He'll be fine as long as he dodges. Baku then unleashed a super powerful explosion. The attack ripped through the hallway, leaving a big hole in the side of the building. The hallway was engulfed in smoke as the explosion ended. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. With the services Skillshare provides, you can get access to many in-depth tutorial videos on basically anything you want to learn. Each class that they have is bound to help you with your creative endeavors. Do you want to learn how to make videos like this one? Do you want to learn how to write scripts or edit audio? Skillshare has you covered, and with our link, you can have a 14-day free trial. So what are you waiting for? Click the link now and get your 14 days worth of classes for free. Link is in the description below. That should have finished you off, nerd. Fire Dragon Flame Elbow! Midoriya hit Bakugo with a super powerful punch. This attack finally caused Bakugo to pass out on impact. Midoriya then took out the capture tape that All Might had given him and tied Bakugo up. This took the explosion boy out of the fight. Back in the control room, All Might and the other members of Class 1A were waiting for the smoke from Bakugo's attack to clear. Can't we get a different angle or something? I'm afraid the smoke has blocked all the cameras. Don't worry. It looks like the smoke is clearing now. All Might and the students were dumbfounded at what they saw. Midoriya was standing over a hog-tied Bakugo. The fact that made everyone's jaw hit the ground was not that Midoriya beat Bakugo, but that Midoriya looked unharmed by Bakugo's massive explosion. Mina Ashido was the first one to express everyone's shock. What is going on? I know Midoriya is strong, but how did he not get roasted by that blast? He looks totally unaffected. Yao Yorozu then spoke up. Well, he is not completely unharmed. If you look closely, you can tell that he did take the concussive force from the attack. It looks like his costume got ripped in places from the Syad force, but I have no idea how he avoided the fire. It was Wendy's turn to speak up. He probably ate it. He did what now? Midoriya's power lets him produce fire and consume it. He can then use that fire he eats to replenish his energy. He can really do that? Wow, I had no idea his quirk was so powerful. Indeed, but the fight isn't over yet. They still need to capture Ida and the bomb. All Might was so amazed by Midoriya's takedown that he was surprised when Kaminari spoke to him through his earpiece. Hey All Might, Ida's wrapped up and I have the hands on the bomb. <laughs> that means we win, right? All Might and the other students looked at the screen that showed Kaminari's location. The electric youth did have Ida wrapped up in the capture tape, and he was leaning on the bomb with his arm crossed. Jiro was the first to recover from her shock. How did that idiot stop Ida? Yalurozu then made a suggestion. All Might, sir, back up the video time a few minutes. That is a good idea, Miss Yalurozu. All Might backed up the recording to five minutes in the past. The film showed Kaminari arriving at the room where Ida had hidden the bomb. The electric blonde was hiding behind a pillar watching Ida do his best impression of a villain. Kaminari tried to contain his laughter at the sight of the foolish and over-the-top impersonation. Ida overheard the laughter and turned towards the bolt-haired teen. Ida then spoke in a villainous tone, or his idea of it. I know who you are, hero. You will not capture this weapon. My villainy will not be stopped. <laughs> All of a sudden, Bakugo's explosion rocketed the whole building. Ida looked around the room, wondering what was going on. Kaminori saw this as an opportunity. The sparky teen disappeared from sight in a flash of electrical power. Before Ida could wonder where Kaminori went, the speedy teen received a massive electrical shock from behind. This caused Ida to pass out and fall to the floor. As Ida's body settled to the floor, Kaminari's body appeared from a cloud of electric energy. The zappy teen then tied up Ida with a capture tape, and then leaned against the bomb. Kaminari then pressed his earpiece to call All Might. Many of the students could not believe their eyes. The only student who was not nursing a severe case of shock was Wendy. The blue-haired girl could tell from the images that Kaminari was not using a quirk. Wendy was no expert on quirks, but she knew that most electric quirks only allowed the user to store the released electricity, not become it. Wendy could also tell from the images that Kaminari was using magic. The power he was using seemed familiar to Wendy, but she could not place it at that moment. All Might finally got over his shock and spoke. Well done, boys. The winners of this match are Midoriya and Kaminari. All students gather in the observation room so we can go over the match. After a few minutes, Midoriya, Kaminari, and Ida made their way to the control room. Bakugo was taken to Recovery Girl. Can anyone tell me who the MVP of this match was? 
Yao Yurozu raised her hand. Sir, the MVP of this match is Tenya Ida. Allow me to explain. Bakugo was so focused on fighting Midoriya that he left Ida to defend the weapon alone. Bakugo also underestimated Midoriya's strength and was soundly beaten because of it. Midoriya fought well against Bakugo, and using his ability to eat fire helped to lessen the damage from Bakugo's full power attack. But, both boys showed a lack of understanding of the exercise. If the weapon had been real, such explosive attacks could have set off the device. Finally, Kaminari did finish off Ida and capture the device, but only after giving his position away to the enemy. Ida was the only one who took the exercise seriously. He made a plan and executed it. All Might and the rest of Class 1A was left speechless by the dark-haired girl's analysis. Well, you did miss a few points. Ida could have loosened up a little bit, but good job. Now, let's move on to the next match. The rest of you students keep the comments we made about Group 1 in mind moving forward. The rest of the matches unfolded much like canon. Even though Uraraka was paired with Toru Hogakure, the two girls could not counter the icy powers of Shoto Todoroki. Meanwhile, Wendy and Jiro managed to win their match. Wendy also gained a greater respect for the punk rock girl. Great job, everyone. You all managed to get through the exercise with no injuries, minus young Bakugo. You all have shown extraordinary potential. I look forward to seeing your progress. So positive. It is nice to hear Miss Scarlet is a real buzzkill. The other students nodded their heads in agreement with Asui's comment. All Might gave his students a big smile. I am glad that I could bring such overwhelming positivity to my alma mater. Now, let me show you kids how a hero makes an exit. Like he has somewhere to be! The muscular man ran away from the students at full speed, kicking up a dust cloud behind him. Ojiro replied to this scene with a gloomy voice. Man, I'll never be able to run that fast. 1A went to the locker rooms and got changed. The teens then met back in their home room. The students then exchanged their thoughts on how the training went. Eventually, Bakugo entered the room almost completely wrapped in bandages. He told the others that he was fine and then left. Wendy had been silent as the others exchanged pleasantries. Finally, the wind user could not take it anymore. The slim girl walked over to where Midoriya and Kaminari were talking with the others. You two come with me. Wendy then grabbed the two boys' arms and dragged them out of the room. Jiro commented on this scene with a flat tone. Man... Wendy seemed like the calm and cheerful type. I had no idea she had such a take-charge personality. The blue-haired girl dragged the two boys into an isolated part of the hallway. Okay, Kaminari, spill it. You're a wizard, aren't you? So presumptuous. What makes you think I'm a wizard? Wendy got irritated at the blonde boy's dismissive attitude. Don't give me that bolt head. There's no way you could do all the things you did during the matches if you weren't. Plus, now that I am close to you, I can sense the magic power emanating from you. You really are perceptive. I thought I'd be able to hide it a bit longer, but yes, I use lightning magic. Really, Kaminari? Who's your master? My master was a man called Laxus Dreyer. Both Midoriya and Wendy's faces were masks of shock. You really trained under Laxus Dreyer? Natsu told me he was the one and only wizard that was stronger than him. He told me the guy was a beast in battle. All true. Training under the guy wasn't easy. But it is because of this method that I am as strong as I am now. Midoriya still did not know what to think of Kaminari, but the fact that he was trained by a wizard that scared Natsu did make the Greenette respect him. Isn't it weird that the three of us are in the same class? I don't think it's a coincidence. I mean, our teacher is a magic user. So you noticed that too, Wendy? I have suspected it for a long time. Titania has always been one of my favorite heroes. Really, Wendy? Wendy got really flustered at the question. Don't act so surprised, Midoriya. We all have our role models. I mean, what girl wouldn't want to be like Titania? She is powerful and extremely beautiful. Midoriya smiled at the blue-haired girl. It is nice to hear that someone else looks up to someone the way I look up to All Might. I know that you'll be a hero greater than Titania one day, Wendy. Thanks, Midoriya. Well said, Midoriya. The three students were shocked to see that Urza Scarlet was standing next to them. The three wizards had been so deep in conversation that the armored hero was able to sneak up on them. You three have not yet reached your true potential yet. It is well within reason that you could surpass me and your masters in three years. And to answer the first question you asked, it is not a coincidence that you three are in the same class. While wizards are rare nowadays, we are valued. Nowadays by the hero community for our power and abilities. While we had no direct influence on the entrance exam, Lucy and myself are close friends with the principal. When you three made it to the hero course, me and Lucy asked that you three be placed in my class. Really, Scarlet Sensei? Yes, Wendy. Keep in mind that Lucy, Natsu, and Loxus 
have high hopes for you three. The three of them felt it would be best if I were put in charge of your training from this point. The three teens were touched by this new information. Midoriya was the first to speak. This is so touching. Don't worry, Miss Scarlet. We won't let you down. I know you won't. You three have more potential than any wizard I've seen in years. But you are still a long way off. So do not slack on your training. The three then replied at the same time. Yes, ma'am. After returning to the classroom and giving the others an explanation for her actions, Wendy, Midoriya, Ida, and Uraraka walked to the train together. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that we the Celestials have many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of we the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.